A lot of people are coming today to my office showing me high levels of uric acid but without any gout and ignoring completely what these numbers are telling them about their health. And it's really, really dangerous to have high levels of uric acid. So in this video, we're going to break everything down. I'm going to tell you where it comes from, which are the dangers, what can you do? Is it something related with my diet? Is it something related with other things? Do I need to avoid meat completely? Do I need to avoid alcohol completely? The only thing that I can do is to take medications and the only thing that is going to be affected are going to be my joints or is it something else? And I really want you to encourage you to follow me through this whole video because high levels of uric acid could be showing you a reflection that a lot of things might be going on in your body. So let's start. Uric acid is a chemical that it's made the breakdown of substances called purines. Purines are inside of the cell. If you go inside the cell, if you go inside the nucleus, if you remember the chain of the DNA that it goes, that double chain that goes up, those little dots that you see on the chain, those are called purines. So whenever every, any process that's going to stimulate the breakdown of cells, is going to elevate the levels of uric acid in my blood. So that's why people, when they're eating meat, any kind of meat, it could be beef, it could be pork, chicken, turkey, whatever. They think that this is the only way in which you can get high levels of uric acid. Why? Because when I'm eating a piece of an organ or a piece of a muscle or a piece of a dead animal, that material inside is going to start decomposing. And the decomposition or the breakdown of those cells is going to have high levels of purines over there and I'm going to eat them and they're going to get into my bloodstream and I'm going to have those high levels. What happens inside my body? We already know that it's part of the decomposition, that, that it's part of the breakdown inside of the cells, and it's, it's a part of that breakdown. So what happens? Most of the cells can produce some uric acid, but mostly the organ that has the main production of uric acid in the body, it's your liver. So all these purines, it, they come to your liver, and the liver is going to be very, very important in something that I'm going to be telling you at the end of the video with the main reason of uric acid and it's not meat. The liver has a very specific role. So uric acid, most of it is produced in the liver, then it goes into our bloodstream and then it goes into our kidneys where it's going to be eliminated in the urine. That's the normal process. Eating meat, it's completely possible, but it's not the main reason. It's maybe the third main reason, or it could be also mixed with other causes, such as any process or disease in which a high breakdown of cells could be occurring, such as a patient with cancer, such as a patient in chemotherapy, such as a patient in radiation, such as a patient after a long period of fasting. Is that fasting going to produce any disease with that uric acid? No. It's part of a process, but then it's going to be flushed out. Number two is going to be alcohol. Alcohol could be produced by two reasons. One of them, it could be because of beer. Beer has a compound that it's very high in purines, but also alcohol by itself, it can go to the liver and stimulate by the process of elimination of the alcohol to stimulate the high production of uric acid. And this is reason number two or cause number two. But which is the leading cause? of the accumulation of uric acid that we see today in mostly everyone, because we know now that about 88% of the population in the United States has some sort of relationship with metabolic syndrome. And you might say, oh, but metabolic syndrome, one of the criteria is not uric acid. No, but it can be related with. And remember that this, the metabolic syndrome, is the root cause, all everything that is cooking to produce the number one cause of death in the world, which is cardiovascular disease. So the number one cause is everything related with the high intake glucose and fructose. When we have by different ways, if you're eating too much, if you're altering the hormones in your body, if you're altering the microbiota, when you have chronic stress, any, any condition that can give you high levels of glucose, of course, you can use that in your cells. What happens when you accumulate high levels of glucose in your body and you start shutting down the production of AMPK. AMPK is very important 
in the way that we can utilize glucose as a source of energy and if not that we can start utilizing fat as a source of energy. Let's remember that sugar or honey or any other syrup mostly is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. But that percent of fructose, the amount of fructose that the body can handle, it's very little. Usually in fruit, fruit has the fiber and the fiber makes that fructose to be entering in a very low pace. So my liver can tolerate everything that it's coming in. What happens when I'm drinking fruit juice and I take all the fiber out or when I'm drinking sugars without any, any fiber at all because I'm drinking sports drinks or alcohol or margarita full, full of syrup or full of sugar and everything else. What happens? That amount of uric acid that is coming to my liver, it's going to start breaking down as a byproduct and producing a lot of uric acid. When fructose gets, gets into my liver, it stimulates an enzyme or protein that is called fructokinase. And this is going to be very important as a part of a treatment. When that stimulates, it goes to a completely different pathway, but for that, it needs energy. To make the production of that, of that enzyme, to use energy, to use ATP, which is the energy, it's going to convert into ADP and then a AMP. That part, that part of the process is going to give me uric acid as a byproduct. And that process can shut down the production of nitric oxide, which is very important for my arteries to be dilated. Almost everyone that has a higher production of uric acid, it is coming from the high consumption of fructose and glucose in their diet. But people say, well, but my levels aren't that high. They say, it says that it's um, like 7.2 or 7.4, and I have no pain in my joints. Well, we know now that the normal levels is not what we find in the population, but which are the levels in which you start having inflammation. And we know that those levels today need to be lower from 5.5. So when people think that uric acid only affects the joints, nope, it doesn't only affect your joints. It can affect your brain. It could lead for the production of any type of dementia, any type of dementia such as Alzheimer's disease. It could be related with Parkinson's disease. It could be related with other neurodegenerative conditions. It could be related with autoimmune disease. So having high uric acid levels could be very related with glucose problems and it can be very related with an altered insulin test. So again, we need to think out of the box and remember then the high levels of uric acid, it's not only related with things in our joints. Now we're going to see what can I do? First thing that you need to do, you need to avoid the things that I just told you that are the leading causes. So sugar, honey, any kind of syrup, please avoid agave syrup. Low glycemic index, of course, because it has less glucose than sugar. Avoid beer, avoid any other alcohol, and also check if there are some meats, some people are more sensitive for fish or for, or for calamari or for shrimp. And also you need to avoid at well, least the foods that are foods high in fructans. These specific kind of foods you can find in here on a PDF that you can download and it's completely for free. It's 100% for you. You can download it here. These are foods that activate that enzyme that I just told you in the liver, the fructokinase, to start producing high levels of uric acid without glucose and without fructose. Why? Because they have a very specific type of carbohydrate in it and they can stimulate that. And the first thing that we need to do is to avoid everything that is raising uric acid. The second thing that we need to do is to start having foods that can help me with uric acid. So I'm going to have foods in my diet that are very high in antioxidants, such as blueberry, kiwis. That's why red wine comes in that part, because red wine has some antioxidants and apparently it doesn't give us the effect that the other kinds of alcohol might be giving me to raise uric acid. The other things that we can do is, of course, be treated with a pharmaceutical medication. Of course, the one that your physician considers. If you have an acute response, there are some treatments for an acute response. If you have a chronic condition, there are some that work better for a chronic condition. But what else? What else can we do? Well, there are some supplements that have been shown to lower uric acid levels and, and then that can really help as a part of a holistic treatment. Of a, something that it's treated in a very integrative way as I'm showing you. Things 
like quercetin, can, have been shown to lower uric acid. Different antioxidants as resveratrol, lipoic acid, bromelain have been shown also, turmeric. So uric acid, it's very easy to be checked. It's done probably all over the world and it can be related with a bunch of conditions. So this could be a part of the test. This should be a part of the tests that you can be asking your physician to be taking you routinely, maybe, I don't know, twice a year, if you don't have anything else going on to check with some other things if everything is going right in your body and if not go back to this video check and see which are the things and which are the tools in which you can start working but always remember to do it with your physician but the daily work that you can be doing it's going to be done by you that's why i'm giving you this information and that's why if we make other people if we give this information to other people then we all can start learning then we can all start being the owners of our health, which is the purpose of this channel. So please remember, guys, to share the video with all your contacts. And also, please remember to subscribe to the channel, to hit the like button. So every time that we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you so much. And till next time.